hypergeometric probability distribution is illustrated in this example with five questions. I'll talk about uh, these formula that is written here and also the plot, the probability distribution plot shown when I walk through the example. According to Zigat restaurant ratings, for 20 restaurants located in Los Angeles, the average price of a dinner was $53. For your upcoming trip, so let's keep this $53, 20 restaurants as your total number of restaurants. For your upcoming one week business trip to LA, you plan to eat dinner at five of these restaurants. Okay, so remember you're planning five. Your company will reimburse you for a maximum of $60 per dinner. Business associates familiar with these restaurants have told you that the meal cost at 30% of these restaurants will exceed 60 bucks. Okay, so 30% out of 20 restaurants will be expensive. So I'm going to write it here that 0.3 times 20 restaurants, which means six restaurants, let's name them R. So we have these number of expensive restaurants out of 20. Now, if you randomly select five, as we as was said initially, of these restaurants for dinner, what is the probability that part A, none of these meals will exceed the $60 cost? Okay, so let's now jump to the probability. So what you're targeting is if X is the probability of selection of a number of, let's say, expensive restaurants selected, then in this case, you want P of X equal to zero. You don't want any expensive restaurants to be selected. In numerator, you're saying R choose X, R is six. So you have six restaurants that are expensive ones and you don't want to select any of them. So X is zero. N is the total number of restaurants, 20. And then uh, you subtract six, expensive ones from them, that means you have 14 inexpensive restaurants. You're running a trial of five because you're selecting five restaurants. So a small letter N is five. Those are is the number of total restaurants you're targeting to go to. So five. And then X uh, is, so let me write it above. Uh, so it's going to be, uh, let me just write it above. So it's going to be um, five minus zero. And then denominator is total number of cases unconditional. So combination basically, n is 20, and then small letter n is 5. So what you're doing in, in part A, you're saying what is the probability that x is equal to 0 in terms of number of expensive restaurants selected, which is 6 choose 0, do not choose any uh, expensive restaurant, and then 14 choose 5. Select 5 out of the 14 inexpensive one, divide by unconditional scenario of 20 choose 5. So if you compute this, uh, I'm going to just write down the formula. So 6 uh, choose 0 is just one case, um, is 1, is effectively 6 factorial divided by 6 factorial. And then uh, 14 choose 5 is 14 factorial divided by 5 factorial, and then 14 minus 5, 9 factorial. And then in denominator, 20 choose 5 is 20 factorial, 5 factorial, and then 20 minus 5, 15 factorial. So it's just a matter of computing it using any tool that you're comfortable with or table. If you do this calculation, then you end up with a number which is about uh, 0.1291. So um, it will be um, 0.1291. So that means there is about 13% or 12.9% chance that you end up not selecting any of the expensive restaurants. Uh, so it's actually actually the chance that you end up selecting uh, at least one expensive restaurant is uh, pretty high. So now part B, one of the meals will exceed the cost covered by your company. Okay, so what you're saying is now you're interested in probability of X equal to one. You want to select one of the expensive ones. So I'm going to just uh, write the formula for you. So in this case, it will be equal to um, so you want one to be selected out of six and you want four out of five to be selected out of the inexpensive ones and then divide by again the total uh, unconditional scenario 20 choose five so you just compute this and again if you just want to see the formula it's just six factorial one factorial five factorial that's for that's for six uh, choose one which means basically six and then 
uh, for the other one is as before 14 factorial divided by 4 factorial 14 minus 4 10 factorial and denominator is as before so I'm gonna avoid writing it 20 choose 5 okay so we compute this number now uh, let's con consider the part C all five meals will exceed the cost covered by your company okay so in this case you're saying probability of X equal to 5 so you're gonna say out of the six uh, expensive one you're going to select five and out of the inexpensive ones you don't want to select any Z 14 choose zero and then denominator as before 20 choose five so in this case uh, six choose five is simply uh, six and then 14 choose zero is simply one and denominator is just as before 20 factorial divide by so as, as I wrote in part A, uh, 20 choose 5 is the same as before. So this can be computed, whatever number it is. Um, so I, I leave it uh, for you guys if you want to calculate uh, using your calculators. And then part D says, either 2, 3, or 4 meals will exceed the cost covered by your company. Okay, so in this case, what we have is you're saying you're interested in probability of x equal to 0, x equal to 2 plus probability of x equal to 3 plus probability of x equal to 4. Okay, so uh, this can be written in the form of 1 minus probability of x equal to 0 minus, uh, I'm just using the complement. So this whole thing, this the, the sum of these three, either you compute these three numbers and then uh, you add them together. So that's one way. There is nothing wrong about it. If you are interested in doing that, that's okay. But another way is you would say it's 1 minus probability of x equal to uh, 0 minus probability of x equal to 1 and minus probability of x equal to 5. Uh, the good thing is these three probabilities that are written here are, are the ones that we computed in part A, B, C. So you can just substitute and say, okay, 1 minus for x equal to 0, we found it at 0 0.1291. And the same thing, you can... Uh, apply the numbers that uh, were found in part, uh, say, in part uh, B and C, and uh, apply them here, whatever they are, and then you find your answer. Now, before I get to uh, the question in part E, let me just, uh, part E meaning this question, on average, how many meals you expect to turn out to be above 60 bucks, and what is the standard deviation? So before that, let me just jump to this figure. The, the plot of distribution or PDF. So the prop distribution uh, function plot is shown here for hypergeometric and compared versus binomial. Binomial is the red dotted ones. X-axis is just discrete values for discrete random variable. Okay, imagine, generally speaking, imagine um, in a hypergeometric case, in this case, as you can see, we are selecting 20 restaurants. And then there are six expensive ones and 14 inexpensive ones. And then we are selecting five restaurants out of 20. When we pick one restaurant out of 20, we are, uh, and we are not replacing. So we are taking away one restaurant. Now, if that one restaurant is one of the expensive ones, then what remains for expensive ones will be five restaurants. Because it, it was originally six, you took one and it's five. So as you pick things, because you're changing distribution of remaining restaurants that you're supposed to pick the next one from, then you will affect the probabilities. So uh, in that case, you will end up seeing these kind of distribution for hypergeometric. As the population size is, or, or n, is increasing a lot and becoming much larger than the trial, in this case, instead of 20 versus 5, let's say you go 100 versus 5. And as the number of uh, restaurants that are expensive become much larger than the number you're picking, so you're picking five restaurants, in this case you have six expensive, but if R or number of expensive ones goes to 50, so let's say this is 50, this is 100, and then let's say this is, I'm just making up the numbers, and, it's, uh, and your experiment is, let's say, total five, and your desire is, I don't know, you want three bad uh, expensive restaurants. Now, in this case, it become very close to binomial. 
because binomial is like that. Binomial is a case in which the probability of success is not going to be affected from one experiment, from one trial to the next one. But in hypergeometric, with a small number of the total population size and a small number of, um, let's say, target uh, success, then as you pick the next time the probability of success will be affected because things have changed. So all this that is written here means uh, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, get to a point where picking and from one trial to the next one, the probability of success is not affected, practically speaking. When that is the case, hypergeometric approaches uh, binomial, as you see here. See, uh, when you're not there, basically similar to this problem, hypergeometric is uh, sort of deviating considerably from the red ones. As these things are satisfied, then hypergeometric approaches uh, and become like a binomial. So that is the meaning of this plot, these plots. Now, uh, the average or expected value mu for, uh, by, for hypergeometric random variable x is shown here, where effectively it is n times p, in which the probability of success or p is r divided by total n. r is six restaurants in this case, and n is the total restaurant. So just uh, intuitively, when you have six restaurants, and then when you have 20, six, is, six expensive restaurants and 20 total restaurants, if somebody asks you what is the chance that in one trial you pick an expensive one, you would say six divided by 20. That's your probability p and np similar to the mu or expected value in binomial. So there is a lot of similarity between what we are saying for expected value of hypergeometric and binomial. Now, for variance of, or sigma square or variance, variance of binomial random, of hypergeometric random variable x, for a second, uh, focus on this side, focus here, uh, let me focus here. So we have n, we have p for r over n, and then for the next one, we have 1 minus p, exactly like what we had in the, for the variance of um, the binomial random variable. So, so that is very much in line. There is a correction factor, which is this factor, n minus n divided by n minus 1. Uh, let me just shift so you can see it, what I'm writing. So what I'm trying to say is np times 1 minus p is very similar, exactly like uh, binomial variance. And then the only difference is this new correction factor uh, parameter or a scale. That is because, um, as I said, uh, especially kicks in when uh, n, small letter n, is uh, comparable to capital letter n. Therefore, you cannot approximate it with 1. If we are dealing with a situation that is a very large population and therefore uh, hypergeometric is approaching binomial, this scaling factor naturally, as you can see, mathematically approaches uh, to 1. And then things become similar to binomial in terms of variance. Now, let's jump to part E. Okay, so for this example of restaurants, on average, how many meals do you expect to turn out to be above 60 bucks? Okay, so you would say mu is expected value of this x, and then it's going to be as was discussed here, n times P in which P is just uh, R over N. So uh, you are trying, you are, you're running the experiment five times because you're picking five restaurants and then you have six expensive restaurants out of 20 expensive, uh, out of 20 total restaurants. So it will be 30 over 20. So it is 1.5. So that means on average, you will end up, when you're picking five restaurants in this experiment, you end up with one and a half on average, as if you have one and a half uh, expensive restaurant picked. And then for the next part, let's compute the variance. So sigma square or variance of random variable x is as shown here. So we have, we have a correction factor. So that would be um, n minus n. I'm going to write it one more time. n minus 1 and then times n p times 1 minus p, and then we're going to just substitute n is 20, trial is 5, 20 minus 1 times uh, small letter n 5 times, we run the experiment, p 
is uh, 6 over 20. And then 1 minus p is 1 minus 6 over 20. Okay, so this needs to be computed and it's, we're done basically. So in this case, you would say 20 minus 5 is 15 over 19. That's the correction factor. And then we have um, 1. Uh, 5 times 6 divided by 20 is 1.5. And then for the next one, we have um, 20 minus 6 divided by 20, which is 14 over 20. So it's just a matter of computing this number. And uh, that is your variance. Um, let me just do it because I just need to also compute the standard deviation, which is the square root of this number. So it's 15. I'm, I'm using a calculator. 15 times divided by 19 times 1.5 times 14 divided by 20. So you get 0.8289 roughly. So roughly 0.8289. And therefore, standard deviation, standard deviation, which is sigma, is just a square root of this number. So let's put it this way. So standard deviation is just square root of this number, 8289, which is... Um, so that would be interpretation of that would be an interesting interpretation. So it would be a QRT and then um, it would be equal to 0.19 uh, So 0 0.9105. So what is the meaning of this standard deviation? Uh, the meaning of this standard deviation is, on average, you're deviating uh, by plus minus 0.91 from the one and a half average of uh, number of expensive restaurants that you will end up picking on average when you are picking five restaurants out of 20 in this example. So that is the meaning of that. All right. I hope that this example is helpful in terms of uh, recalling how to how to apply hypergeometric distribution, what is the meaning of it, and then how to find the corresponding mean and uh, standard deviation and variance as was shown in this example.